it was early 2020, and here at Airmail Magazine, we were looking for stories to mark the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. One of the people I was working with was one of our members called Jeff Brereton. He had actually been ground crew on hurricanes during the battle. And he happened to mention in passing the serial number of a particular hurricane he'd worked on. Now, when it came time to finding images for the magazine, I typed in that serial number to Google and, well, more in hope than expectation, really. And to my surprise, there it was. Countless images of Jeff's aircraft popped up on the screen. It turns out that the hurricane Jeff had worked on was in fact the only remaining airworthy hurricane that fought in the Battle of Britain. So I just had to reach out to the owner to put the two in touch. So to have the opportunity to meet one of the ground crew that, you know, without whom this would never have happened, uh, was just magical, it really was. The story is just an, an unbelievable coincidence. And it's so incredibly lucky to have found him. And I, I, you know, I just couldn't believe that there was th this amazing guy was, was still around and actually remembers working on our hurricane. But it was just brilliant. I mean, thank you to you and to the whole team for making that connection because it's moments like that which I'll treasure. To have met uh, James is an absolutely wonderful person. Is. James heard from some reason, that I think possibly from the RAF Association, that I was uh, the mechanic on that aircraft during the Battle of Britain. And it was the first aircraft that I worked on. It was the only aircraft that was standing out of the original 12 on the last day, and the pilot came back with part of the wing missing. And uh, he got out of the aircraft, and he went and pulled a piece of this wing off and was walking up the field, shaking it like this over his head. And all the lads were, were saying, well, if you can't shoot them down, knock them down. It was just unbelievable to be able to be able to see see that aircraft again, that it had survived. They were all concerned as to whether I'd be able to walk up the steps to get into the aircraft because it's such a narrow space. And uh, I think they said they were amazed that I, the way I walked up there, I was so eager to get into it. Wouldn't you leave that ground? You're in a totally different world altogether. The main signal he, he gave me says, if you've had enough, put your thumbs down and I'll get you down to the ground as quickly and safely as we can. But I didn't want to, I, I was putting them up. I want to go up. <laughs> and uh, it was that feeling that sort of feeling that didn't. you can't have that feeling on earth. You see the same clouds and things, but uh, they don't look the same. They're not the same. They don't feel the same. It's just wonderful. I can't wait to go again. I can't. <laughs> don't know about my family. <laughs>